is Rich Marshall with God at Work. Welcome to our program today. So glad you've joined us. Special guest is joining me today. It's going to be a little bit different program than we've had in the past, but I know it's going to be one that will speak to your life and touch you. So get ready for that. To lay the framework for it, I want to read to you from Ecclesiastes chapter 11. In verse 1 it says, Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. And then I'm going to move down to verse 6. It says, In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Here's a promise from God. Just keep working because you don't know what is going to work for you. So work in the daytime, work at the nighttime, watch God, watch what he does. My guest today is named Hayward Jackson. Hayward is from Las Vegas, Nevada. He's got an interesting life and an interesting ministry. And when I met him, it was like God spoke to me in my ear and said, that man needs to be on your program. And so he's coming today. I'm convinced because God knew he should be here that you're going to be blessed by our time. So thank you for joining us. Let me pray that the Lord would just open his windows and pour blessings upon us today. Father, we thank you because you have joined with us. We thank you that we have the promise that when we cast our bread, that you can bring back a harvest. We do it in the daytime, we do it at nighttime. We don't know what's going to work. We just know you're going to bless us. Thank you for that in Jesus' name. Stay tuned, folks. I'm going to be back in just a moment with Hayward Jackson. Get ready to be blessed. Want to make a difference in your place of work, but not sure where to start? God wants to work powerfully in your life, no matter what job you're doing, paid or unpaid. Bringing Revival to Your Workplace, written by Rich Marshall, the host of God at Work, provides unique spiritual insights that will equip you to live out your God-given call to the marketplace. Download this free practical guide and believe God for a spark of revival in your life today. Welcome back to God at Work. This is Rich Marshall. I'm here with one of my brand new friends, Hayward Jackson. Hayward and I met uh, a few weeks or months ago, and we were meeting with a group of businessmen, and the Lord just pointed to you, man, and said, I want you, I want you on Rich's show. Thanks for saying yes. Hayward, welcome to God at Work. Thanks for having me. Well, you're welcome for that, and thanks for coming. So Hayward lives in Las Vegas. Uh, my home church is in Las Vegas, although I don't live there. <laughs> if, if you watch this program for a while, I had my pastor on. That's your pastor as well. Uh, pastor Clinton House was on with another of the business leaders from that church. And I was meeting with them, and that Hayward was at that meeting. And, but Hayward doesn't fit the mold, uh, any mold that I know of. So, uh, Hayward, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know that you haven't always had money. You've been homeless. Just walk us through a little bit of that. Well, I started out, um, like most people, graduating, uh, trying to kind of figure out where, where you wanted to earn a living in life. Um, that journey led me to Las Vegas. And um, after a while, I ended up kind of homeless, sleeping in my car. Kind of homeless. Yeah. <laughs> sleeping yeah. in my yeah. car. Yeah, you can't be kind of homeless. You're homeless or you're not. And... Uh, and I just, uh, after doing that and gaining some experiences from that, I really wanted to kind of focus on what really uh, was more meaningful for me. And uh, I picked up a, a, a unique set of skills during that time. And uh, once I really got into a place where I can kind of uh, do essentially what I wanted to do as far as my life was concerned, I started focusing on uh, reaching out to things that had, reaching out to people and, and reaching out in a way that uh, I was impacted while I was homeless, in other words, uh, one of the big things that, that stood out to me is that I was looking for uh, certain opportunities. So once I got into a position to provide those opportunities for others, then I started doing that. So an opportunity would be like a place to sleep and a place yeah. to get a meal and that Absolutely. sort of thing. Absolutely. I, um, I, inter interestingly enough, um, when I was homeless, I always went to church. Um, I, I went to the gym. I worked out. Um, I showered, in, you know, of course, in, in the gyms uh, quite a bit. And uh and I would always kind of be putting out this, I thought this energy because I wanted really people to, to really discern uh, where I was at and, and, and it never really happened. You wanted to discern that you were homeless, that you needed yes, help. I needed an opportunity. Okay. Um, and I, I probably could have reached out and I probably could have said something to certain people and, and I, I just didn't. 
And, uh, and so once I got into this, this place that I am now, I said what I wanted to, to do was be, be that, uh, be that situation that I was actually looking for for others. And so you want to be the answer? Yes. Well, so I know a little bit about the answer. I haven't yet seen yeah. your your okay. home there in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. but you you take homeless people and give them a yeah. place to stay. Yeah, I do. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, I had this facility that I was I had another plan for. I wanted to uh, set up a counseling center for it, um, and that actually came out of another business idea that I was working on. And at the time, uh, that that deal was 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 going uh, not in the direction that I wanted it to go. I was leaving the property at that time, and I just kind of had a thought and or or vision of of this this place being zoned as a residential. So I went to the county and I checked the checked out the residential ordinances, and they said, well, you know, this is we can't do this here. Uh, this is, and so the gentleman said, well, let me look it up. And when he looked it up, he said, okay, it looks like it's okay, but you'll have to go check was zoning. So I checked with zoning. He kind of had that same response. He looked it up and he said, well, yeah, it looks like you can do it. Here's the application. And, you know, it started as just a thought and every, at every step of the way, it was a yes. And before you know it, we had a really nice facility. At the time I was working with a, a group of investors and, uh, and they really had more of a monetary interest. Uh, the place was a property that was left over from the recession uh, in 2008 when the economy went down. Mm -hmm. It was a title company, a very large building, uh, essentially a lawyer's office. It had a lot of glass and just a very nice. And, and the, the, the group that I was working with was just sure that this was not going to be a place for the population that I was trying to serve, that they would tear the place up. And they wanted to take out all the glass and, and you know, make it look, you know, make the place look a little bit uh, almost like a mental institution. Oh yeah, right. and uh, and I said that's not the way that I wanted to go. I uh, it's it's this principle, uh, and I'm not sure where I picked it up, but they call it the Pygmalion effect, that uh, that that the students perform at the expectation of the teacher. Yes. And so I saw myself at as the teacher, and I said, okay, well, I'm going to create this really nice facility, and it's going to be a, a resort. We're going to have we're going to give a resort experience, and in that. I know that the, this population of people that that most people would not want into their home, they're going to behave a certain way. So we did that um, with. At the time, we had we had a lot of security staff and all these security features in place, and now we we literally have hardly any, and uh, we've had really great outcomes. Individuals have uh, have left our facility, have gotten jobs, and and they've gone on to do a, a lot of great things, and they've they've changed their life. So we've got really out, great outcomes. How uh, many people can you house in there? I can house up to about twenty one people in there. Twenty one people, mm -hmm. and and it's full most of the time, is it? Yeah, it's most. It, originally, it didn't start out being full. We were we were we were harassing everyone to give us an opportunity, and it okay. it's, it's slowly picked up, but it's it's full now. Now, uh, now I, I've seen the video on this, and I'm yeah. I'm going to show it right now and let everybody okay. see it because yeah. you, what what yeah. what you think of a homeless shelter, right. you think of I mean, bunks over here and yeah. uh, a line yeah. of d dirty people lined up, yeah. but and the but smells. you you've de and the smells, <laughs> <laughs> you've decided yeah. to make it a resort yeah. setting, yeah. and and it changes their yes their outlook on life, folks. Yeah. I'm going to take yeah. just a minute now. You're going to watch this video. Yeah. Uh, Hayward's going to be there. He said he okay. shot this in a real short time, but uh, <laughs> but I've seen it, and I know it's going to tell you a little bit about. So this is a new kind. This is a God-centered mm -hmm. homeless shelter mm -hmm. right in the center of Las Vegas, Nevada. I'll be back in just a minute, and we'll talk about this some more. We really feel that one of the best ways to be able to help people is really give them a solid foundation as far as a place to stay. Um, a lot of our clients have, um, have had a, a, a rough life, and so we want to really kind of put them in a really nice environment, uh, hoping that we can impact or uh, stimulate some change. Uh, and then we move into the other services as far as um, some of the mental health services and um, rehabilitative services and, um, and finding jobs and, and, uh, and other resources that's available for them. And one of the first things is that we try to take them in, uh, try to give them a bath, uh, give them a meal, and just kind of 
really take them out to heat and give them a, a great place to sleep. And we just try to treat them like if they were in some type of high-end casino, right? And that's why we call it uh, the Resort Villa. Now, Hayward, that is a whole different look yeah. at a homeless shelter. Yeah. Uh, but your vision was to make it nice. Yes. And so now some of the stories coming out of there, you yeah. said they, they, they come out better than when they went yeah. in. Uh, yeah. Just one or two examples, huh? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, one of the big things that we've, that we've seen uh, that these individuals, that they come into, this, uh, into our facility, that they have a lot of skills already before they've come. So we've we've met electricians, we've met carpenters, we've met um, we've met journalists, uh, we've met just a various of all sorts of people. And so what we've given them really is a platform to to be able to uh, to get back to where they were, or or even get back to where they want to be. Yes. And so we've 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 had uh, some some individuals have substance abuse issues. And, uh, and and our thing is, you know, we're not we're not we're not clinicians. You know, we're not there really to focus on that. What we're doing is we're providing a clean, safe environment. We're trying to create atmosphere so that they could uh, begin to uh, embrace the change uh, that's that's in front of them. Not necessarily focus on the negatives that's happening in their life. Amen. Mm -hmm. How long have you been running this home? A year. A year. Yeah, a year. All right. And you've been married a year. Yeah, absolutely. Man, a lot's happening in your life yeah. in the last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and your wife is there taking care of things now. You yeah, said. she's she's our uh, CEO. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for staying home while, uh, mm -hmm. while my buddy came down here yeah. to, uh, to Orlando. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that as a man who is formerly homeless, you're mm -hmm. not making a living from taking care of the homeless. No, no. So so how, how do you how do you earn your living? Well, interestingly enough, I started out in this as an insurance broker. Okay. And I um and I was actually going out to individuals' houses, and uh, they were uh, they were being housed in mobile homes sometime. And I and I noticed one one particular uh, group of seniors that I was working with. Uh, they had it was a husband and wife. They were being they were in a mobile home, two dogs, and they had a dirt floor. Mm. And so Ooh, um, I've always been the type of person if I see a problem, I fix it. Mm. And and so I. Uh, at that time, I, I helped them fill out various applications and things that they, they qualified for. They just didn't know that they were available or they just didn't have the, the aptitude to be able to, to submit the applications. So uh, I took that same type of uh, business practice and I just applied it to everything. Any, everything that I do, I always continue to just, uh, anything that's attached to that, I'll learn it. And, and so I, I, I always come up with these various types of businesses. And they're all the same because they're, they're all surrounded helping people, but some type of way I, f I focus on the help, and then God brings the money on the back end. Sometimes. So you are a uh, yeah. you're a problem solver. Yes. With people's problems. Yes. And taking care of them. So you have a homeless center. Yes. And you were selling insurance and find yeah. out people needed more than the insurance. Yes. You still insur still selling yeah. insurance. Yes. Uh, what else are you doing? Uh, well, one of the things that was uh, interesting enough, um, once we came out with the Affordable Care Act, we had a lot of individuals that were over 65. Uh, that have been citizens in the United States. These were groups of seniors, uh, and they did not have insurance because the Affordable Care Act didn't create a space for them to be able to have insurance. So we had to help those individuals with immigration issues. So then we picked up immigration, and uh, and then I, and and how I got into housing. One of the individuals that I that I picked up, uh, parents. He was from Cuba. He was a bilingual gentleman, and he had substance abuse issues, and he 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 was in and out of homelessness. So that led me into creating the opportunity or creating a, a housing solution for him because he worked with me for a long time. We became very close. And I knew that he did very well when he had a place to stay. Uh, and I actually bought the, the facility with the intentions of housing him and, and him becoming a manager. But he passed away uh, probably uh, maybe uh, two weeks before we were able to open. He, oh had, my. he had a heart okay. attack and passed away. Oh, wow. So, so from the homeless shelter, yes, and then to insurance, yes, and now immigration, yes, and and then other housing things you, yeah. you're talking about, yeah. yeah, is that real estate or? Yeah, real estate is one of the things that that God gave me is that um, you want to control the property, uh, you want to be able to control the services in the property, and I I I, uh, 
I said, I said, you control the beds, you control the heads, and that's actually the well-being of the people that's inside of the facility. Mm -hmm. So in that, um, God is, he, he led me to becoming a real estate broker as well. So I picked up my real estate license because I wanted to be able to acquire properties and strategically without just sitting in front of a broker and not really understanding uh, some of the different terminologies and the things that was available. So then I, I went and I learned real estate and I picked that up as well. Now, getting uh, getting licensed to sell insurance. Yeah, I, I did that a few years ago. I was okay. helping my son, and, and right. that's hard. I mean, you got to pass some tests to get your yeah. real estate license. Yes, you had to study to do that as yes. well. Mm -hmm. You you said earlier you have a college degree. Yes, sir. Uh, where'd you go to college? Well, I went to school at uh, at University of South Carolina. Okay. Transferred to Florida A and M, and I finally finished up at uh, at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, in actuary science in actuary science. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're smarter than the average man that I meet. <laughs> well, I'm a genius for what God has called me to do. <laughs> a genius for what God has called me to do. Yeah. That That's a good way to yeah. put it. So uh, do you mind telling the story about how you, yeah. you saved, uh, yeah. you maybe saved a tragedy just yeah. a few weeks ago at your church? Well, um, I was I was prompted by uh, one of the, one of the the sound, the sound people in the, at the church, and he said it was a homeless gentleman, and he had, and he said, hey, you know, I, I know you have a housing facility, and maybe this guy could be someone that you that you can uh, that you can assist. And I walked over to him, and obviously the guy, he was homeless, but he had some other things going on with him, uh, some mental illness issues, and he was kind of planning to do some things to the church, and uh, I was able to to get the authorities involved in it, and uh, and. And I would say circumvent some a tragic situation that was about to happen. Okay, now uh, that was putting it mildly that <laughs> right. we're going to circumvent a tragic yeah. situation. Yeah. Because this guy had in mind yeah. to do more damage right. in uh, killing people than anybody had ever done. Yeah. Uh, folks, folks, watch how this happens now. Yeah. So the Lord has Hayward at a place mm -hmm. where he's the right person at the right time. Mm -hmm. Because he knows about homeless people, he can tell. He knows how to talk to them. He's not uncomfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Can walk up to the man, but the man had very, very mm -hmm. bad intentions, right. probably at the church. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Uh, and and you were able to right. to figure that out. Yes. To talk him through it and yeah. to keep him talking yeah. long enough. Yes. Until the police showed up. Absolutely. Uh, and he wanted to be the greatest mass shooter in history. That that was that was his thing. Okay, he, he so wanted. so let's say that again. He wanted to be the greatest mass shooter in history. The greatest mass shooter in history. Yes. He felt like he had been robbed when the earlier mass yeah. shooter in Vegas did that. Exactly. He, he felt, but but God put Hayward there mm -hmm. at that moment, mm -hmm. really the same things. Mm -hmm. And and the reason mm -hmm. I want to talk about that, it's uncomfortable. I know mm -hmm. for you to even mm -hmm. talk about. Mm -hmm. The reason I want to talk mm -hmm. about it is I want to say to you folks. Uh, when it says watch and keep your eyes open, yes. uh, see something, say something. Yes. Here's a man who did that, and the result is right. that we stopped that tragedy. Yes. And uh, I don't know how many more of those you've stopped by helping these right. homeless people because yes. some of them just out of the sheer frustration of life, right. putting them in the wrong place, are going to end up doing something yeah. bad. Absolutely. But when the love of Jesus comes along, yeah. and the the love of Jesus is there. And uh, and I understand that you're not uh, you're not out there preaching on the street corner. No, you're not you're not trying to to be the chief evangelist of town. You're no. trying to help people. Yes. But when you help people in the name of Jesus, they yes. get the help they need. Yes. Yes. And uh, so, on behalf of the church, on behalf of America, I want to say thank you. Thank you. I read the article in the newspaper, the Las mm -hmm. Vegas newspaper. Okay. And uh, and they said in there that you had recorded him as he yeah. was talking, yeah. so they could listen to your phone with him making these yeah. claims, yeah. and so they had the right to do to him what needed to be done. Which yes. he needed help. Yes, uh, he needed to be arrested. He needed to be stopped. Right. But he also needed help. Yes. So uh, most of us don't know what to do with mm -hmm. homeless people. Mm -hmm. If we see a homeless person, maybe we give him a dollar. Right. Maybe we just turn our head the other way. Mm -hmm. Uh, would you educate me and uh, the audience right now? You see a homeless person. What, what are some simple things that those of us who don't know what right. we're doing could start doing? Well, what I do when I when I relate to homeless people, um, I forget about them being homeless. I treat them as a person, and I kind of put myself in their shoes. You've been there, so you know yes. how to do that. And what I do, what I mean by that is, I um, I say to myself, if I was in this situation and I didn't have a place to sleep at night, what would I do? 
So sometimes you could you can start with simple acts of kindness. Uh, and this is something new to me, a pair of socks, underwear, mm -hmm. um, toothpaste, toothbrush, um, even a cell phone charger. Okay. Uh, you know, because now most of them have technology available. They'll go to the library. Um, those are a bus pass. Those are those are simple acts of kindness that you could that you could uh, extend towards a homeless individual. Uh, even speaking to them and having conversations on a regular basis. You don't necessarily have to to give money, um, but those are really things that that homeless people really appreciate. Even during the day in Vegas is is, is well over 120 degrees. Uh, I open my facility up. We have Wi-Fi. We have internet. We have cable. So they can come down. They can come down during the day and watch television all day. Okay. And we'll uh, sometimes we'll wash their clothes for them while they're while they're uh, hanging out in our facility. So those are just basic things that we do. Uh, you know, n no one wants to uh, re extend themselves to a homeless guy and say, "Hey, uh, could you give me the underwear that you have on?" And I'm a I'm going to take those and throw those away and give you another pair. But those are things that that a homeless person would really appreciate. Offer them a shower. I'm not saying invite someone into your home, but th these are the type of things that we've right. been equipped to do to help homeless people as well. We've been equipped to do. Mm -hmm. God put you in a place where you yeah. could help others. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I, I for mm -hmm. one, I'm just grateful, mm -hmm. grateful for that. And the fact mm -hmm. is you were homeless for a time yourself yeah. mm -hmm. and you're prosperous now. Yeah. And, and God has prospered you because you got mm -hmm. in line with him and yes. you lined up your different uh, lines yes. of, of income. And now you're able to help others. Yes. And uh, that's that's the key to this whole thing. Yes. Uh, so I, I, my, my brother one time had a, a bag in his car, uh -huh. and and we said to him, "What's that?" He said, "That's socks and a toothbrush and a New Testament that we with a couple of dollars we we give to the people on the corner. Instead, yes. of just give them a dollar. We give yes. them something else." Yes. And uh, of course, he's a Gideon. He's the guy that gives away Bibles everywhere. So right. he gave us a whole box of Gideon Bibles, and right. my wife and I now have bags in our car. Exactly. That have a Bible and socks and exactly. and uh, chapstick and uh, exactly it, you know a few things and a couple of dollars maybe a five dollar bill uh, which I might have handed to them but something yes. that's practical as exactly. well. Thanks for assuring exactly. me that that's a good thing. <laughs> yes, it is <laughs> because we're just we're just trying to make a difference, folks. Exactly. That, that's what God at work is all about. It's mm -hmm. trying to make a difference. Now we could have talked to Hayward about his business because. He's good at it. He's making money at it. He's successful. But that wasn't the point of this one. The point was, yes, he was homeless. Now he's prosperous. Here's the point. He's helping people out of what he learned. And I hope you have learned something today. A homeless person is just you or me with some bad luck came their way. And we can help them. We can turn the table for them. So thanks for what you're doing, brother. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Thanks from Heavenly Father. Thanks for the family of, of God. And thanks for us here at God at Work. Thanks for joining me. Folks, I'll be back in just a moment to close out our session. God bless. Want to make a difference in your place of work, but not sure where to start? God wants to work powerfully in your life, no matter what job you're doing, paid or unpaid. Bringing Revival to Your Workplace, written by Rich Marshall, the host of God at Work, provides unique spiritual insights that will equip you to live out your God-given call to the marketplace. Download this free practical guide and believe God for a spark of revival in your life today. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed this time like I did with Hayward Jackson. You know, Hayward is a man that has found a place where God can use him, not in a church ministry, but in a ministry to people. He's a member of his church. He's, uh, I see him when I attend there because it's a church I go to also when I'm in Las Vegas. His pastor is my pastor. But he's not the kind of guy that's going to fit your typical church leader uh uh, position. He's going to be a man that's out there helping people. He knows how to do business. He's good at it. He's successful. He makes money, but he knows how to help the hurting. And that's what he's chosen to use as his way of ministry. And I'm just so thankful that there are some people like him who care enough about homeless to not just put them in a a shelter, which they need a shelter, but he made his shelter nice. He made it look good. He made it clean. He made it where he can take care of the people. He, he made it where their lives can feel important. In fact, where they can leave that place knowing I've got a purpose in life. 
And the fact is, the people are coming there, and they're not dealing with their addiction issues. They're dealing with just loving them and letting them find their way. But they're coming out of his transition home into a place where their life is successful because he finds out what they did before, helps them get going there again. God is at work using this man. I want you to see that wherever you are, when you look around, there's a way that God wants to use you. And it may not, may not be the normal way. It may not be in, in leading a large business. It may not be in, in a ministry in a church. It may be helping people along the way that need help. Thank God that there's someone like Hayward out there doing it. And thank God that some of you are saying, oh, I could do that. That's, so, that's a place I could jump in. Or maybe I could do this or this. Just let the Lord speak to you. He'll make it clear because he cares about you enough to give clear direction to where you're going to serve him next. Some of us is going to be in a church, some of it's not, but it's all going to be God-directed. So, Father, thank you today. Thank you that, that Hayward has, has averted a tragedy by his sensitivity to the Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you're speaking now to some people who heard him and say, yes, I can do that. Thank you, Lord, and we give you praise, Lord, because today we know you are at work. Oh, God, be at work through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching God at Work. You can re-watch today's episode or any other program in this series by going to god.tv forward slash VOD. We'd really love to hear from you. Send your thoughts to feedback at God.tv. Also, don't forget, download a free copy of Rich's book at God.tv forward slash work. <laughs>